Growing up, my mother had a very odd methodology to how we adopted technology, but somehow or other, we did end up with a computer and she felt that typing was one of the utmost important skills. After all, she grew up with secretaries, typewriters, and so enter the dear Mavis Beacon. And she taught me typing and I was at the top of my class when we started learning it in school. And from there, it only makes sense that I have recently delved into the world of mechanical keyboards. I am your cool uncle Marissa and today we are going to be building the extremely affordable and extremely fun Ortho 48 practice keyboard by Canon Keys. Canon Keys is based in Canada and they have a small line of practice keyboards. These are extremely bare bones, extremely affordable. The Ortho 48, which we're going to be playing with today, is only $35.99 USD. And they are just really good for, well, practicing. And I think they make really good soldering practice and also just Sometimes it's fun to do something even if you know how to do it. Now I already have my end game keyboard and I am awaiting a Zoom 65, but I was starting to get the itch and I was also a little curious about ortho keyboards and 40 keyboards. And so I thought, why the heck not? And I nabbed one. And hopefully this video is also helpful because the instructions on Canon Keys website so that I can find for their practice series is for their version one, which actually includes a lot more soldering of things like diodes and the such but this version does not. Um, there's a lot of things that you skip, um, some things that are different, so maybe just watching this video can help you get an idea of what the version 2 board's installation instructions are. In terms of what's in the box, we get the plate, the PCB, the base, some screws to put them all together, as well as the USB-C that you can plug in and screw in three different places, I believe, on the board. So left, right, or center, which is really nice. Adds a little bit of customization to it all. And that's about it. So you will need to get your own switches, stabs. If you're mill maxing, you need those, and obviously keycaps and USB-C cable. You will also need screwdrivers and a soldering iron and all of its friends and family. So let's go ahead and put this thing together, see what it sounds like, what it looks like, and what I'll end up choosing to go with it because I've got a couple of different options. I actually am going to be doing this in two sittings because I don't have any switches, uh, but I do have a little bag of tactile switch samplers from Canon Keys, which should help me decide what I wanna go with. All right, let's go. It is nighttime, so we've got some mood lighting. The PCB's pretty straightforward. Everything is pre-installed except for the switches. We've got the little USB-C port. This can screw in a bunch of different places, which is neat. And we've got the little connector that goes from the board to the PCB. We're gonna put that to the side for now. I'm gonna mill max this thing, which basically means we take these tiny little, um, I don't know what to call them, but you solder them in where you would solder in the switch and that way you can turn it into hot swap. I got these ones from Divinity. You can get them cheaper from Mouser or DigiKey, I think but I didn't want to accidentally get the wrong one. I hear there's a few ways to do this. One of them is to put them on the switch and then insert them. I'm just gonna raw dog it. I'm just gonna put it in with my fingers. Uh, if you have stubby, chubby, or fingers that shake, you can use tweezers, or you can use the switch method. Just try everything, see what works for you. I feel like that is always the most important thing. There's no right or wrong way to do something like this. Once all the sockets are in, I'm just going to give them a push just to make sure that they're seated flush and tightly. If you thought this video would not have Kapton tape in it, you are gravely mistaken because we are going to use Kapton tape to <laughs> 
make sure that nothing falls out when we flip the PCB to start soldering the switches in. To be honest, you could, I don't know, probably use a different kind of tape, but Kapton tape is insulating while we're soldering. It comes off clean. It's just a trusted friend, partner, lover, father, mother, sister, brother. Now we get to start soldering our sockets. I'm just using my trusty little flux pen in order to prep as I go so that it doesn't evaporate. I think that a flux pen is much better than uh, liquid flux or anything like that but just because you're not flooding the board and you don't need a lot because the board isn't coated or anything. And I'm using a chisel tip to solder because it distributes the heat more evenly and you just need to solder enough to create a connection between the circular pad and the outside of each socket. If you flood the socket, don't worry too much. You can remove it in one of two ways. You can either use a J-tip on your soldering iron to push it out as you heat it up or you can use some very fine tweezers along with another soldering tip in order to push it out while you heat it up. Now I would recommend getting some spare sockets in order to have some in case you do flood any of them. Unfortunately I didn't do this so I did have to salvage a few lost soldiers. It was definitely not worth the time and effort but the way you do that is you just heat up the solder inside and use something else to push it out of the socket. It's really quite a pain. And now that we're all soldered up, we can peel that cap on tape off. Now that I'm all done, I'm going to check my work by using a switch that I don't care about. This one, I don't like the way it sounds. I don't like the look of it, the cut of its jib, and just plug it into each set of sockets to make sure nothing is loose, nothing is clogged. Once you do that and get all the sockets working. You can also plug it in at this point and just test each switch on a key testing site. Now moving on to our stabilizers, also known as stabs. I'm sort of mixing and matching between C3 tangerine stabs and KBD fan ones. I don't remember which is which anymore. But we've got the stabilizers, the housing, uh, some stickers where the screws go in, stickers for the bottoms of the housing, and of course screws. Lubing up your stabs is really important. So I'm going to start with the housing, which I'm gonna use some of this on. I think I also got this from Divini Key. And you just need a small paintbrush as well. Using the paintbrush, we can lube the four sides on the inside of the top housing and don't forget to also lube the little indent where the stabilizer ends up sitting the metal rod ends up sitting next i'm going to lubricate the bottom housing on the four sides where it's going to make contact with the top housing. Essentially, you want to eliminate any rattle or scratching that can be caused by the two pressing against each other. Then to lube the metal thingies, I've got some dialectic grease and I am going to do this a very messy and unpleasant way, so I apologize. Yep, just gonna dip the tips right in there. Ugh. And then you can use a q-tip or a toothpick or whatever and just get it a little over the bend.
Installing it all together into the housing makes my head hurt. I did play with Legos as a kid. Uh, I don't know why my brain is so broken. Now we can move our focus to the board and install the stabs. I put down some of the little black pads that come with the kit under where the stab housing will click in. There are also these circular stickers that go on the back where the screws go in. And next, in a very unpredictable turn of events, we will be screwing the stabilizers in. can put the plate on top. Time to secure the plate and the board together by putting one switch on each corner. These are glorious panda switches. They are lubed and they're in my main keyboard and the keyboard I made my girlfriend. They're really nice but they work a lot better in her keyboard because it's flatter and so the long travel distance and the heavy spring aren't as noticeable in hers as they are on mine. But this is also why I'm probably looking for a softer spring or at least a shorter travel distance for this board because it is flat. Before filling out the board, we're going to build it together and screw the bottom to the plate and PCB and also don't forget to put in your mini USB-C. The capped on tape makes a glorious return in order to keep the wire in place so that it doesn't get caught on anything or pop out from the side and just look unattractive. To help me pick a switch, I grabbed a sample pack of tactile switches from Canon Keys. My favorite ones were the Neapolitan, the Anubis, and the Bluish Whites. And I actually settled on the Bluish White, but none of these were available on Canon Keys any longer due to everyone else also having impeccable taste. So I'm gonna take a bit to figure that out and I'll see you guys in a few days for me. Welcome back, it is daylight we can see and the aesthetic is much nicer. Now if you're curious, here's the guide for what each of these switches are. But what I ended up doing was just going ahead and buying the Magic Girl SP Star switches because I've been curious about them for a while and I was thinking of using them in my Zoom 65 build once that comes. So I figured if I like them, I'll pop them out and use them in that once it comes and buy the bluish whites from somewhere else and stick them in this and if I don't well uh, no harm no foul right they'll be in this board which is just for fun 
Also, to be totally honest, I did want switches that were cute since you can see the switches uh, in this build. There's no case. And these are freaking adorable because everything Mint Monica makes is incredible. I have the Magic Girl keycaps and those are actually going in the Zoom 65 too. Once again, I'm going to put a switch in each corner. That's always good practice, but especially with this board, since I realize the switches are what is holding everything together. Yes, there are screws, but more so. And it also helps me understand why it doesn't have a hot swap option. Now, overall, it's going to be a little more challenging because I'm going to have to push the PCB up against the switches every so often since the switches are able to push them down. Also, keep an eye out for any switch legs bending. You will have to pop them out and straighten them again. I can definitely see why this was a solder board. And if I did this again, I might go ahead and do the solder route, but I don't regret not having done it because I did want to try mill maxing. And this was a board where if I had had messed up, I would not be devastated. After all, it's called a practice board for a reason. And we've got some left over, but it looks great. It looks like a pastel chocolate bar. I want to eat it. Now, what keycaps are we using? So a while back, Canon Key sent out a newsletter. Yes, everything seems to go back to them, huh? And there were these keycaps in one of the images and they helped me track it down because they didn't know what it was either. Turns out it's these PBT keycaps called Summer Goddess Festival. And they're only on Taobao. And if you live in the US, it's very challenging to buy something from Taobao. So I used a proxy called Panda Buy bought two sets by accident, had to sell one, but now we're here and it is incredibly out of order, but we'll get through it. We're smart. I'm so bad at gauging size visually, so I've brought out all of my accents, modifiers, novelties, um, and I'm trying to figure out which ones are two units to see if I can spice things up a bit. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I think I'm just going to go with the kit keys, the just two blank ones, just cause they fit better and they're the same profile. But we're all done, so let's move on over for a sound test.
we're back and here it is. Our little process video was chock full of thoughts and ideas, so I won't go too much into it. But overall, I think that this is a great board if you want to practice soldering um, or if you just want something to spend some time on and have a result that you know what the outcome is going to be. You know that it's going to come together well. It's not something too complicated. I think it could also make a good work keyboard if you're a person who works in an office. You could just throw it in your bag and take it. You don't have to worry about it getting scratched up. And for what it is, the fact that you can put in whatever switches you want, the keycaps you want, it sounds better than like a ducky keyboard, despite not having a case. So do with that what you will. I can also definitely see why there's no hot swap board, given that the switches are really holding this sandwich of a board together. So unless you think you're going to reuse your switches, like I probably am, I would recommend just going the direct solder route and not mill maxing the thing. Although if you want to practice mill maxing, which is one of the big reasons I mill max it, you should go for it because well, it, it's $35.99. In terms of my plans for the future, I probably am going to take these switches and put them in my Zoom 65. The Magic Girl SP sound really nice and feel nice, but there's just too much travel distance for this kind of flat board. Also because it's flat, I wouldn't mind swapping out the keycaps one day for a more uniform leveled keycap set like a DSA or XDA or something. I also plan to do the tape mod, which is essentially putting tape on the bottom of the PCB so that you can make it sound a little nicer. Um, because everything is so exposed on this keyboard, I probably won't go with regular duct tape or painter's tape, which is usually the option. Um, I actually found on Keebs for All, they do custom printed tape mods. So I'll probably just get the smallest and cut it to size. And I'm thinking of doing a bright flash of color, something that is similar to the color palette of the switches that I have. And you know, just give it a little bit of an accent to pop out from the all black. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed building this with me. It was a fun process. It required a lot of thinking um, along the way, but not, you know, there, there wasn't any frustration. And I feel like half the time when I'm doing repairs or new builds, there's so much frustration because it's not something that's super accessible. So this was just a very zen-like experience for me. Let me know what you think about my choices and parts. If you have any thoughts, is this something you're going to try out? And let me know if you would like more keyboard content. Like I said, I'm waiting on my Zoom 65, so maybe I'll put that together on a video or I don't know, a live stream. I'd also love to do a video, maybe just a really short one, just showcasing what exactly my end game keyboard is because I love it with all my heart despite it being bulky and kind of just super extra. But thank you so much again for hanging out with your cool uncle and I hope you come over again soon. Take care.